There are a lot of different ways to take damage in Fallout 3. You could slip off a rock, you could get whacked with a sledgehammer, you could get shot with a miniature nuclear warhead. But just like in real life, there's more than one type of damage in Fallout 3. Can you beat Fallout 3 without taking any radiation damage? Radiation damage, just like regular damage, has no immediate impact on how you play the game. But for reasons I'll explain later on, I drained the points from Endurance and distributed my 9 special points amongst the other stats. Got mocked by everyone at my birthday party. They seemed to know what my future had in store for me. I shot a bug and was woken up by a bitch who would be much more attractive with the inside of her head splattered all over that wall over there. I was finally in the real game and the time had come to set things straight. The thing about radiation is that no matter what your level, no matter your perks or your skill or your armor, you can never go beyond 1000 rads without dying. But if your health is set at 1, the amount of radiation required to kill you drops to 199, as ticking over to 200 gives you minor radiation poisoning, which will kill you in this circumstance. To ensure that any radiation kills me, I used a console command to set my rad level to 199. Any amount of radiation results in my death because my max health is 1. That means that this is a true no damage run. No radiation damage, no damage damage. I'm as fragile as I can possibly be. The emotional damage of my father abandoning me pairs nicely with all the other trauma I've experienced in the last 11 seconds, which makes it the perfect time to escape the vault. Escaping the vault without taking any damage is not terribly difficult. I expunged far too much ammo on Butch's mother after I beat him to death, so I went back in time to let her get mauled by the roaches, killed the troublemakers blocking my path, killed the vault security guards for what they had in their pockets, killed the security chief and the overseer too, opened the escape tunnel, and was out into the capital wasteland. I leveled up and went all in on small guns. No other skill is worth having. Barter can be useful and lockpick is nice to have, but my primary focus is being able to attack from a distance with at least some level of success. In some alternate dimension, perhaps one where I didn't burn my finger on my toaster oven when making cheese sticks several weeks ago, I would have put some points into sneak. Outside Megaton, the caravan guard had two grenades that I thought would look nice on my Christmas tree, or flying through the air at a small child with the pin pulled out. He took 10 shots to the dome like they were nothing. I went ahead and tested my luck on Adam's glory puddle to make sure that the radiation killed me. It did, but it wasn't as instantaneous as I would have liked. Still, it was quick enough that you don't really have enough time to do much of anything. I sold most of my garbage and boxes of shit from Blue Apron to Moira, stole a single item from her, spent a little while staring at the ground, I don't really remember what I was doing at that time, and spoke to Colin Moriarty about me dad. After hacking my way into his closet and picking the lock on his computer, I tripped on a box and died. Tried to convince Burke to pay me a lot more money for Big Boom, failed, and set off for some place that wasn't a shithole. Closer to nowhere near my destination, a dog used Commando Pro to lunge at me from 20 feet away. That perk is still so overpowered, I love it. Before journeying towards more death, some jackass hit me with a grenade and killed me. Not the explosion, the grenade itself bouncing off my soon-to-be corpse is what made me dead. The dangers of horribly timed quicksaves appeared for the first time when dealing with a raider with a welding mask and a machine gun. After parkouring inside Walmart, because what are the employees gonna do, ask me to stop? I used a laser pistol for what felt like the first time ever. Browsed Grandma Sparkle's pockets, didn't kill her, the game crashes enough on its own without her cursing it, and met a guy wearing a Vanta black hat. I killed him and discovered something I hadn't even considered. Water is irradiated. I can't take radiation damage which means I can't go in the water at all. I mean, I, I technically could, because it doesn't kill me instantly, but I didn't abuse that because the point is to take no radiation damage whatsoever. I made a deal with the devil. I give the devil his soul in exchange for allowing his hat to return from the Shadow Realm. Then I used a grenade to ever so subtly blast his body closer to the shore, allowing me to pick his pockets without taking radiation damage. A few raiders, hiding under a bridge, sought to test my gaming prowess. They won about 90% of the time, but the only time it counts is when I win. It's a heads I win, tails you lose sort of situation. While in the presence of the guardian gnome, I ate an irradiated snack to see if it would kill me, which it did. That death didn't count though. 
I considered it training for when I opened my jar of 15 year old cheese at 1 million subscribers. For the first time since the end of the game that hasn't happened yet, I crossed this bridge. It was peaceful without the giant propaganda machine. A pair of super mutants gave me some trouble. One of them had a missile launcher. Explosive weapons are annoying when you can't take damage. If you're really far away, it's obvious you won't be killed by the blast, but there's a big area where you can't tell if you're going to die. Up ahead, I approached the Jefferson Memorial in complete darkness and proceeded to eliminate the mutants guarding the entrance as best I could without the benefit of sight. From their bodies, I recovered a hunting rifle which, along with my small gun skill that is now somewhere in the mid-70s thanks to leveling up and my armored vault suit, made the super mutants inside not all that challenging to kill. Sneak attacks often yield a one-shot kill, while giving them the heads up about your death can make them suffer more before succumbing to the call of the void. For some reason there was no super mutant brute in the memorial. I found that odd, but I ignored it and continued towards Rivet City. There's a super mutant base rather close to Rivet City that I either never encountered before or forgot because it has no value to my existence. I killed one or two mutants there. A brute had a minigun, which was this game's way of telling me to steer clear of that area. Inside Rivet City, I bought and sold ordnance with flak. I got myself a lever action rifle and a combat shotgun. Used the battle tested technique of walking objects into a corner before getting onto my hands and knees to forcefully stuff them deep inside my pockets for transport. Once I got my fill of petty thievery, I went back to the mart and went east-ish towards GNR Radio Tower. I stopped by the Chrysalis building and robbed a few super mutants of their life. I died several times on the stairs when I did what you already know I did. I don't need to say it. In an open area, combat isn't necessarily anything mind-shatteringly horrible. Unless of course you save the second a bullet enters your spine. That can be a problem on occasion. The combat shotgun was thankful for being rescued and showed its gratitude by murdering three people for me. Two brutes were taken out by an act of God. I think there were mines or something that they stepped on. I did nothing and they both died. After wandering around for a bit, I passed through the underground tunnels, taking out feral ghouls and all other undead creatures I came across until I exited the metro station and arrived at Chevy Chase. Several lions and her stupid friends insinuated through their rudeness towards me that I was incapable of handling myself in a physical or metaphorical confrontation. I tried to kill them a few times. But because Bethesda is Bethesda, killing them is not an option. Making them your enemy is not an option. The behemoth died rather quickly after being shot by a mini nuke. I had to wait a moment to approach the body because of the smell and the radiation emanating from its body what because of the nuke and whatnot. I wasted little time inside the Galaxy News radio building. I murdered 3Dog and assumed the role of 3Dog myself. I went ahead and pushed his body down the stairs and cut off his limbs to make it look like his death was an accident. Not that he died, I am 3Dog. Someone who definitely isn't 3Dog killed themselves on my stairs. With my next destination being a mystery to us all, I went back to Megaton to sell trash and snitch on Mr. Burke to the police. I attempted a double cross by killing everyone inside Moriarty's saloon. Couldn't get my rampage to be successful though. Grenades did more harm than good, and I wasn't able to kill everyone with my shotgun before anyone fought back. Then things got weird. Lucas placed Mr. Burke under arrest. Burke had a seizure and did nothing. Then when I went outside, Lucas got melted by the sun. And just like that, I became the sheriff of Megaton. I changed back the three dog. Being the sheriff is a lot of work. Before making my way south, I stopped by Vault 101, just in time to see the vault door close. I eventually found myself on memory lane. I recalled past experiences in this alleyway that involved me being killed over and over and over and over again in some previous video. Having matured since then, I took out most of who wanted to do harm to my delicate body, evaded a trap like a pro, missed multiple shots on a nearly stationary target, and found myself at the edge of what does and doesn't exist. I hugged the border of reality and headed west, then north, until I found myself in Andale, where the few adults I encountered were quite odd. Unnaturally polite and well off considering their position in the wasteland. One of the children vaguely mentioned something resembling incest, which is never a good sign. Old man Harris suggested that I get out of town while I still could. It was around that time I realized the natural law and order in the settlement may be slightly askew. I turned myself invisible with a stealth boy and tried to plant a live grenade in a child's pocket. It didn't work. Don't judge me, you would have done it too. 
With the stench of failure stained in my nostrils, I successfully picked the Andale Shed key, a gun, and ammo off Mr. Wilson, then got the basement key off Jack Smith before the sneaky wore off. Their basement was a little weird. I couldn't put my finger on exactly what it was that was wrong. I left to talk to Jack about it, but the house was empty. The entire town was waiting outside the house to ambush me. I tried to tell them that cannibalism is fine by me. He didn't buy it. Those fools. They didn't have any guns. They never stood a chance. Small Guns was now nearing 100. I snagged the Child at Heart perk, spoke to Old Man Harris about what would happen to the town now. I had hoped that he would say I could have one of the houses, now that the adults were all dead. He didn't, so I left, killed a few more raiders, and arrived at Tenpenny Tower. I told Chief Gustavo that I'd be happy to get rid of Roy Phillips, got a free gun with my Happy Meal, and entered the Forbidden Tunnel. I had to hug the wall to avoid radiation. I could have ran through the irradiated area quickly enough to avoid dying because of something, I guess. I think because you get radiation on a per second basis, so if you take radiation damage for less than a second, it doesn't count to the radiation tracker. Maybe. I actually have no idea, but it doesn't matter. I temporarily erupted into a wall of fire when I fired a gun near a gas leak. I used a grenade to set that off from a safe distance and double-crossed Gustavo by agreeing to get the ghouls inside the tower. I made a small error in judgment when I decided that I didn't know how to open the containment door. I picked two keys off Gus to open the door. Neither worked. That annoyed me, so he had to die. His fellow guards didn't appreciate his death, but their opinions meant nothing to me. By the time they were all dead, I was still 3-dog. I raided the armament locker and their deaths were unnecessary. I found out some time later that my objective was the stairs behind the tower. That newly found knowledge would not bring back Chief Gustavo and the other guards who fell before me in my rampage. That's it. Before getting to those stairs, I gave Willie some water and took his life to even out the exchange. I did him a favor. He'll never be thirsty again. Roy Phillips and his boys got inside the tower and destroyed everyone. The mask he gave me made me look more like Three Dog. His real body is probably pretty rotten by this point. Their assault lasted several minutes. Alistair Tenpenny was among the last to die. Not because he's tough or because of his sniper rifle, but because he was on the top floor. With the day one in the name of life itself, I left the tower and headed for Smith Casey's garage. I did another radiation test and died about as quickly as I thought I would. Inside the garage, I knocked out the robot with a bullet, put on the jumpsuit, entered the simulation, summoned Blue-Eyes White Communist to release me from my nightmare, discovered that hitting the dog will cause the Communist to shoot it, that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, tried to kill Dad, and agreed to meet him back at Rivet City. A bunch of dogs tried to ambush me and Pops outside the garage. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen in the last five minutes. Inside Rivet City, I killed a few people for worshipping the false prophet. Dad came to my aid just as I suspected he would, and even killed one of the Rivet City security guards. The scientists were destined to die in the evacuation tunnels beneath Jefferson Memorial, so I saved them some suffering by exploding them all with a missile launcher. Well, as many as I could anyway. The number of them who couldn't die disgusted me. I killed the scientists I could and knocked out the rest inside Project Purity before flipping the power switch in the basement and getting the fuses from Dad. I installed the fuses and died. I died before installing them, actually. Turns out there's a very slight amount of radiation right where the fuses need to be. So, you can't install them. Which means the Enclave can't arrive and you can't go to the escape tunnels with Madison Lee. I've been here before. I knew just what to do. I left that place behind and headed towards Little Lamplight. A few cows pulled an old yeller and mauled a super mutant to death while I watched, and I got into Little Lamplight with no issue whatsoever thanks to the Child at Heart perk. But there is a problem. You can't get Little King Shit to open the gate to Murder Pass unless the Picking Up the Pieces quest is active. Oh, and I killed Sticky just to see if anyone cared. Nobody did. To get beyond the gate, I had to use an old tactic us Fallout 3 speedrunning world record holders used back in the 90s. Spam, quick save, and quick load into a corner of the gate until you clip through it. Then, you can enter Murder Pass as you normally would. By this point, the super mutants are glorified punching bags. Skeletons are always a threat to your health though. I whipped out old Bessie the missile launcher to take out one of the brutes, used a few grenades to do more damage, then finished him off with a shotgun. The lever action gun rifle could kill mutants with a single shot if you land a shot that kills them in one hit. 
At level 6, I got small guns up to 100 and put the remaining points in the lockpick. Fox was predictably unhappy to see me. Not that his happiness will matter for too much longer. For some reason, I thought there was radiation in the control console room, but there wasn't. Sid the Human and Sid the Centaur both tried to kill me. Fox was thrilled to be released from his cell, and I actually did most of the work as we worked our way towards the Gek. I needed Fox to get it for obvious reasons. But after he retrieved it, his life served no purpose whatsoever. I blasted him with a fat man and finished him off with a submachine gun. Thankfully, nothing else broke and I was abducted by the Enclave. I almost made myself nauseous by spinning in circles in the cell like a madman. I got my shit back, put on my face in proper three-dog attire, and killed everything I could find throughout the Enclave base. None of their lives mattered. Most of them fought back about as well as a rock would fight back after being told it's about to become a bunch of smaller rocks. I smooth-talked the president to make him think I was on his side. I escaped without too many issues, arrived back at the Citadel, and hit another wall. Because I never arrived at the Citadel with Madison Lee, the big metal door never opened, so I have no way to get in. That, of course, was a lie. There is a way in. Jump onto a pile of rubble on the northern side of the Citadel, and you can quickly maneuver yourself out of that area you're supposed to be in. From there, you can run beneath a few buildings and more debris until you're inside the space the game sets aside for the exterior of the Citadel. You're not supposed to be there, so it's just empty space. Open the door from the other side, sneak attack a Brotherhood Initiate to see if you can kill them, you can but the game doesn't like it, attend the briefing with Elder Lion, and you're nearly home free. I bought a few last minute items from Captain Durga, then killed her because she had it coming, attempted to kill a few more people who of course can't die. One Brotherhood Knight followed me outside, and was rude enough to shoot me. Maybe he was upset that I blew the head off one of the knights inside. Didn't really matter, I sent him to his friend, used a fat man, to see how many Brotherhood soldiers I could get away with killing, and had to fast travel back to the Citadel from within the Citadel to get past the invisible wall that's left when the metal gate opens. Liberty Prime and I got to the Jefferson Memorial without too many issues, and Sarah Lyons and I entered the Jefferson Memorial to finish the fight. I used a fat man at first because I thought it would be the most effective. Sorta was, sorta wasn't. A 44 Magnum took the heads off those who were blinded by the nuclear blast. I sneak attacked Colonel Autumn and his two goons, and something was very wrong. My dad was still inside the purifier. I couldn't go inside to say hello because of the radiation, which for some reason took a lot longer to kill me than it should have. But I was curious. More curious than I was when I put a magnet to my parents' TV after being told not to do it in school. So I temporarily suspended the challenge to see if James had anything interesting to say. He didn't. I embraced the radiation, died, and went back in time like 45 seconds. I told Sarah Lyons that there was no way I was giving her the code. I knocked her out once, then a second time to get her inside the purifier. After she killed me, when I attempted to give her permanent brain damage, I gave into peer pressure and told her the code. She went inside and activated Project Purity. And not only did I beat Fallout 3 without taking any radiation damage, I beat Fallout 3 without my father dying. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout 3 without taking any radiation damage. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for helping make videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter or don't, I don't give a shit. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad, have a wonderful day.